there's all kinds of historical danger, you know, whether you're Romanian or Hungarian or Serb or Croat or Ukrainian or Russian, um, Pole, Czech, you know, I mean, there's just always so much turmoil going on. But when I talk about safety, I don't mean an absolute safety. I mean, I come to your office and I sense that you're going to accept me. You're not going to judge me. You're not going to reject me. You're going to be curious about me. You're going to have some compassion for me. You're here to, you're here to help me. So safety is not just the absence of a threat. It's also the presence of contact. As human beings, it was millions of years of contact with people very close to us. Small band hunter-gatherers. Everybody was together. Selfishness was unknown because it threatened the whole tribe. It was all about what we can do for the whole unit. Support each other, uh, look after each other, give to each other. And if you look at traditional cultures, they do a lot of giving. They don't do a lot of demanding and competition with each other. They do a lot of giving. That's their culture. That's because that's how we evolved. So basically today we have a culture that was very much against human nature. Now human nature exists, but it doesn't mean that it's going to be realized. For example, if I had a, you know what an acorn is? An acorn? Mm -hmm. Acorn is, now what's the nature of the acorn? What, what is the acorn supposed to become? supposed to become an oak tree. Okay. You plant, the, you plant the acorn in the ground, it's going to grow up to be a big oak tree. So that's the nature of the acorn, is to become an oak tree. But what happens if you put the acorn on my desk? Is it going to become an oak tree? No. No. Why not? Because even though it's its nature, that nature needs the right conditions in order to develop. The same thing with human beings. We have a certain nature, but you put us in an environment that doesn't support that nature, we're going to become distorted. You have to be conscious of, 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 of what we need and what we've lost. Yes. You said that you make um, meditation, you made... Uh, so that this kind of things helps. Everybody needs to find something, you know, actually, I get more out of swimming than I get out of meditation. But when I'm swimming, I take deep breaths, I blow out, and I do this for 50 minutes. Uh, that for me is a kind of calming and meditative process. I come out of the pool feeling very different than I when I'm in. For some people, it's meditation, yoga, nature walks, prayers, singing, chanting, making music. Creating, creating art, um, walking, I mean, whatever it is, you know. They don't even talk about cure. They don't talk about healing at all. But they don't even talk about cure. Because they have no idea how to cure depression or, or, or bipolar illness or ADHD or, or psychosis. They can control the symptoms is what they can do. That's the experience that people have. Then there's the diagnosis of mental illness. That's only one way of looking at that experience. And we being doctors, we want to fit everything into a medical paradigm, as you say. There's other ways of looking at it. The, the other way to look, for example, um, I have been diagnosed with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. And, One of my books is on that subject. I know it's been published in Romania. So yeah. people say, I have ADHD, attention deficit. I have it. But is that, is that true, that language? Think about it. Mm -hmm. I have a cell phone. I can put down the cell phone. I can pick up the cell phone. I can throw it away. It's a thing that's separate from me. When I say I have ADHD or I have depression, is that a thing separate from me? 
Or is that a process that's happening inside me? Obviously, it's not a thing that's separate that somehow entered me. It's, it's a process inside me. How did that process arise inside me? That arose because of my life, of what happened to me as a small child, what happened, what, what kind of life I've led as an adult. Now, most psychiatrists don't understand that. They think of these things as things that people have, but they don't know how to ask many questions about the kind of life that person has had that maybe will explain why that process is active inside them. Now, if you start asking, how did this process arise inside you? And you have to look at people's lives. Maybe then you can help people heal. Maybe it can, it can help people um, address that process in a positive, active, um, in, intuitive way. That's very different from here's a pill, take this and call me in two weeks. And by the way, I have nothing against pills, but they don't deal with the underlying process. They just suppress the symptoms. When you talk about process, no, uh, the, in fact, there are feelings. No, there, are, there are our feelings that we feel. We have, we feel sadness. We feel happiness. Uh, we, we, we used to, you, we used to put these these feelings in two boxes. You know, uh, negative feelings and uh, positive feelings. And uh, negative feelings, we have to, you know, to give some medication or just throw away, you know? No, if they are not good. Yeah. What you said, what, what, I, what we learned in the, in the, in the Shipibo people, that they are, what, what you said about that? Well, you know, when I talk about process, I may be talking about feelings, but I'm not necessarily talking about feelings because sometimes, okay. The problem is people don't even know what they feel. A lot of people, for example, had a lot of anger, but they don't feel the anger. Why don't they feel the anger? Because as children, they were not allowed to. So they had to push it down, repress it, push it down so much, they don't even know they're angry. By the way, what is the word when we push something down? What do we call that? We call that in English, depressing. Depre to depress something is to push it down. You do it, now, first of all, the feelings tend to show up in, in, in a way in people's lives, but they don't know what the feelings are about. So very often people might feel anger because of the bus was five minutes late. And they don't know what that they're really feeling is their hurt and disappointment as a child that their needs were not met. But all of a sudden, you know, the bus was late. This is terrible. You know, we have to, you know. No, it's about what happened to you as a kid. Yeah, so what I'm saying is that the feelings sometimes show up sideways, they show up unexpectedly. And then sometimes you have to really talk to people and ask them about their childhoods and what happened to them. And, and, and then the feelings, if people feel safe, see the reason the feelings were suppressed in the first place in, at age two or three is because it wasn't safe to feel them. Because mm -hmm. if I get angry, mommy won't like me. Mm -hmm. And I can't have mommy not like me because then I don't survive. So I'm gonna push them, not consciously, unconsciously, I'm gonna push them my feelings. Because I didn't feel safe. Now, if, if they come and talk to you or me or, or, or anybody and they feel safe, now that safety gives them permission to feel whatever is there. Mm -hmm. So what people need, need for to be fully in touch with their feelings, they need safety, emotional safety. Mm -hmm.